I've not shrunk. No. Not yet, I'm getting that way though. But the reason this is like you are all the way up there, like some kind of um CCTV spying on me is because in order for you to see everything that is going on with catacombs cubes, you have to be high up because it is big and it is chunky and it demands space like the mat does and the tiles do the palace does and the various constructions that you have as well now my history with the um, elder games and catacombs uh, goes back a number of years to the point where i was first kind of introduced to the game of catacombs itself by colin and uh, i was i was terrible at it I was absolutely abysmal. Um, however, um, if there's one thing that people keep lying to you about is to tell you if you practice at something, you would eventually potentially become quite good at it. And that's a lie because to this day, even though I have amassed a collection of catacombs uh, games and went as far as inventing an, an award because we liked it so much, which graces several of the catacombs boxes, I still am um, absolutely dreadful at it. But that is another story. Time moves on. People move on. People have different ideas. And to be honest, Aaron West at Elsa Games could have quite easily continued to produce various expansions and different versions of catacombs and the, the catacombs crowd would have lapped it up forever. I know I definitely would. So it takes a it takes a different direction completely with catacombs cubes. Whereas catacombs and the catacombs variations was about taking out monsters, um, catacombs cubes itself is more into the art of construction and building and essentially trying to develop a a town itself. Um, it's a very it's a very simple resource management game where the idea of the game is that you will play one of several characters um, with your own warehouse your own little construction yard as well and your own space to collect kind of bonus coins and in every round there will be either two ways you'll be able to gain uh, gain resources one of the, the easiest and simplest ways to play the game is to use these humongous chunky dice that they take ages to chew through. Literally hours I've tried. Or there's also a tile drafting variant as well, which is all kind of a, uh, which is all kind of a, uh, kind of controlled by the foreman um, who gets this lovely red cube for some reason. I don't know why. It's just one of these things. Um, on your round you'll be deciding which dice that you want and then you'll be able to put them into your uh, construction area when you or the other option is you are able to decide from one of these cards one of these tiles that has been laid out if you have enough resources in your construction area for you to go ahead and to take them and then go ahead and build yourself one of these if you do that then what will happen is that you'll build your building but you'll lose everything else that you've got as your construction pieces except for these kind of obsidian obsidian blocks yeah, each of these kind of represent different types of materials and they all kind of grow in size in terms of the number of blocks that they represent so there's a four there's a three there's another three and so on and so forth um when you lay a building or build a building what will happen is that you flip the tile over and you get this lovely kind of illustration which will appear in that and that was and when you're connecting the kind of the town 
the city together and you will get kind of rewards based on matching connections and things like that. Now that can be everything to kind of like victory points to allowing you um, to take some of your pieces actually out of your construction area back into your warehouse to allowing you to build the palace. Palace is like the kind of the ever present, ever scoring kind of thing that you can allow you to kind of gain victory points as you go. Because you'll be able to, certain tokens that you have, the red tokens will allow you to start to build little parts of the palace. And as you do that, you get to move up this rather delightful track, which gives you additional victory points, but also gives you these little bits of obsidian which you never ever quite get rid of. They'll never ever get kicked out of your construction. They'll never ever kind of, you'll never kind of lose them for any other reason. And in that case, they're there, they're pretty dull. They take a while for you to build a building, but they're there, which is pretty good. Um, and that's the kind of the gist of the game. There's a lot, there's a little bit of strategies that kind of come in as you play the game. In the fact that on certain tiles as you build them, like we here we've got a no oh, I've not selected this, it's a so wizard's laboratory. Just my luck. It has an ownership part to it. And what you do is when you own a part, you will take your little house and that will be declared your little dwelling. And what it will mean is that Anytime somebody else builds a building in the future where they connect up to that building, you will get the reward on the card, which means that as the as the, the town itself and the city itself expands, then there's always bonuses to be had. You're not always kind of left at the kind of the end. Um, there's a lot to be said for the tactileness of it all, for the chunkiness of it all, for the fact that it's not small and shies away from the fact that it's huge and big and interesting and kind of lovely. And there's literally some really kind of lovely touches in the game itself. The, um, the wedding church, for instance, actually has... Um, an illustration of Aaron and um, Aaron and his wife on on the wedding day. It's just little, little things, like little touches like that, which um, I really really like. I find it quite quite nice actually as well. And and maybe it shows an attempt for Aaron and Elsra games to move away from the catacombs traditional flick it, kick it and stick it kind of model because technically um, he could be producing different variations of the catacombs games, he could have done it in different themes and, and, and the, the fan base is strong enough that they would have probably continued to back and continued to buy and maybe in some ways with him having, because he did get married not too long, you know, a while ago now but um, Maybe this was him moving away from the destruction side of things and maybe it was him moving to actually saying, well, what can we do which is creative instead? And that's my take on it. And I like to think that's absolutely correct and true. It's probably not. It's just that maybe uh, somebody came along, pitched the idea and he liked the idea of it. Um, is it huge and big and in-depth and full of strategy? No, of course it's not. But then again... Catacombs has never been like that. Any game in the series was never hugely, massively involved in strategy. It was always <coughs> very direct, very in your face. I mean, there was things you could do, but you would. You're, this is not a game that you're going to sit there between turns and ponder and contemplate what your next move's going to be. This is going to be a game which you're going to end up just building walls with the stuff that you've got in your hand and there's going to be kind of disapproving looks as once again uh, from across the other side of the table you've built something which has clattered down and thus caused a lot of noise 
and potentially annoyed the other players. Um, it's perfectly suitable for 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 y younger players um, to kind of get involved in with a bit of guidance. It's a nice Sunday afternoon relaxing kind of game where you sit there and you want to have a little bit of fun. You don't want anything to be kind of be too stressful. You've got the Monuments expansion, which uh, takes things to the next level, includes kind of extra kind of buildings which you can build on it as well. So it, if it follows the kind of the normal kind of Elsra model of doing things, I would expect this to grow in various different ways because uh, Elsra isn't the type of company that sit on an, on an idea that does relatively well and then do nothing with it or just look for the completely different thing as you can see with like what they've done with catacombs and castles and um, catacombs conquest and the main catacombs to keep kind of improving on it and adding little twists in the formula to make it different um so it's a, it's a it's a it's just a lovely lovely game you know it's not trying to be difficult in your face it is just charming to say the very very least the artwork is 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 it's stunning in it. The pieces are lovely. All these little bits of backing artwork. It's like there's Easter eggs aplenty with everything in here that you can look. You can spend hours just looking at the artwork itself. And in that case, you know, it's it just it it just kind of I it just kind of it once again confirms for me that Elsa Games are a company that. When they bring out a game, you can pretty much play it and you're not going to have that many doubts that you're not going to have a decent, enjoyable, kind of fun, kind of time with it. Yeah. So, that's Catacombs Cubes. It's Eldra Games. Um, this is We're Not Wizards. Um, my name's Richard. If you, uh, if you like what you've seen, click the like button drop us a like or put us a comment anything like that that would be absolutely wonderful um, but until the next time stay safe uh, yeah roll sixes and uh, make something awful like a really really tall tower like a really tall tower like literally a really 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 tall tower how tall is this going to be? Look how tall this is. <sighs> Look at that! Ah, dropped it. Goodbye.